हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द कोर्स ऑन मैकेनिकल वाइब्रेशंस यू आर डिस्कसिंग द कंसेप्ट फ्रॉम यूनिट नंबर थ्री विच इज फोस्ट वाइब्रेशंस एंड इन द लेसन नंबर टू विल बी डिस्कसिंग द फोस्ट वाइब्रेशन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स सो नाउ एज द फोस्ट वाइब्रेशंस वी हैव सीन दैट देर इज अ होमोजीनियस सोल्यूशन एंड देर इज अ पर्टिकुलर सोल्यूशन and this gives you the total solution so the homogeneous solution we have seen for the last lecture which is a case of underdam system and it is going to have transverse vibrations it is going to have transient vibrations which leads to have the vibrations amplitudes dk and these vibrations are going to die out after some amount of time so we are much interested into the particular solution because this gives us xp gives us a steady state amplitude so what is the meaning of steady state amplitude the amplitude of vibration is not going to decay it is going to remain as it is so for this we are assuming a solution xp as capital x into sin of omega t minus phi where x is the amplitude of vibration omega is the excitation frequency and phi is the phase angle now if you are differentiating this with respect to time we'll get x dot p which will be equal to omega x into cos of omega t minus so the same can be written in terms of sin terms as omega x into sin of omega t minus phi plus pi by 2 similarly if i are differentiating this xp two times we'll get the acceleration so that will be equal to minus omega square x into sin of omega t minus phi we can counter this omega sign and we can get it at omega square x into sin of omega t minus phi plus pi and now if we are putting this all values into the total solution as which was the equation mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f0 sin omega t so what we'll do is we'll put the value of xp x dot p and x double dot p into this equation and we'll try to find out the solution so let us put it here so this becomes m omega square x into sin of omega t minus phi plus pi plus c into x dot value what we got is c omega x into sin of omega t minus phi plus pi by 2 plus k into x is k x into sin omega t minus pi this is equal to f0 sin omega t and now if we are rearranging this that we are taking all the forces on to the left hand side we'll have this equation as f0 sin omega t minus kx sin omega t minus phi minus c omega x sin omega t minus phi plus pi by 2 minus m omega square x sin omega t minus phi plus pi this is equal to zero now the terms what we are having into this equations are representing different forces so the first force f0 sin omega t is nothing but the impressed force this is nothing but the impressed force 
then kx sin omega t minus phi is nothing but the spring force. Then c omega x sin omega t minus phi plus pi by 2 is nothing but the damping force. And m omega square x sin omega t minus phi plus pi is nothing but the inertia force. So, the magnitude F0 kx c omega x and m omega square x are the magnitude of the force. Whereas, sin omega t minus phi, omega t minus phi plus pi by 2 and omega t minus phi plus pi are giving us the directions. So, let us try to draw the forces onto a graph. So, let us have axis and we are having a perpendicular to axis to this. So, this is your reference axis and this is a perpendicular axis. So, we have to draw the vectors in such a way that their vertical component is going to give us the actual force magnitude. So, if I are drawing the force impressed force, this is F0 and if we are making this angle as omega t, if we are taking the vertical component here, it becomes F0 sin omega t. Likewise, the solution what we have assumed xp as x sin omega t minus phi. So, what it shows is the value here we are going to have between f0 and x is phi. So, this becomes omega t minus phi. And now, if we are seeing for the spring force, the spring force having again the same angle that is omega t minus phi, but it is having sin as minus. That is why it is parallel to the displacement and the magnitude of the force is kx. If you are taking the vertical component, again it will be kx into sin omega t minus phi. Similarly, the damping force is having angle as sin omega t minus phi plus pi by 2. So, the vector will be like this and the magnitude of the vector will be c omega x. And the inertial force magnitude is m omega square x and the angle is again sin omega t minus phi plus pi. So, it is in the direction of x, but it is out of phase. So, this is magnitude of length of the vector is represented by m omega square x. So, this is called as vectorial representation of all the forces in the forced vibrations onto vector diagram. So, this gives us a lot of information and with this we can solve majority of the problems. So, let us see how the diagram actually looks like. So, this is the diagram what we are having. Okay. So, we are having uh, F t, we are having uh, C x dot t, we are having m m x double dot and we are having k x. So, this is the vectorial representation what we are having and we have already seen uh, the different formulas what we are required. So, let us uh, write those formulas one by one. So, if you want to find out the value of x, it is given by two formulas that is f0 by under root of k minus m omega square bracket square plus c omega bracket square. And if you want the same in non-dimensional form, you have to divide 
the numerator and denominator by the value of k. So inside the bracket this becomes k square here, this becomes k square again and this becomes k square. So if we are doing it, we will get a non-dimensional form of it and we are treating f0 by k as xst. So in the under root k, k upon k it becomes 1 because it is whole bracket square minus m omega square upon k you can have whole bracket square plus c omega by k. So this is what we are doing for non-dimensional form. This is what we are doing for non-dimensional form. So, we need to do some adjustments. Well, let us discuss that. So, m omega square upon k can be written as that is k by m is nothing but natural frequency. So, this becomes omega by omega n bracket square. And your c omega by k can be written as c by cc into cc by 2m into 2m by k into omega. So, c by cc is zeta, cc by 2m is nothing but omega n, 2m by k that is k by m can be written as 2 by omega n square into omega. So, this term becomes 2 zeta omega by omega n. So, if we rewrite the value of x, we are getting this as x by x s t which is equal to 1 by under root of 1 minus omega by omega n bracket square whole bracket square plus 2 zeta omega by omega n whole bracket square. Similarly, we can get the value of phi. So, the value of phi, we are getting it as 10 inverse of c omega divided by k minus m omega square. So, we can substitute whatever the things we are having and we can get it is in non-dimensional forms as 2 zeta omega by omega n divided by 1 minus omega by omega n bracket square. So, this is how we can get the amplitude of vibration of steady state vibrations and we can call that amplitude as steady state that is x and the ratio x by x s t is known as magnification factor. So, that is that is the meaning of magnification factor is to get the steady state amplitude x, you have to multiply the zero frequency deflection that is x s t is nothing but f zero by k. So, you have to multiply this zero frequency deflection by an magnitude or multiplying factor by this equation to get the actual steady state amplitude at that frequency and at that value of zeta. So, this is how you can get the steady state vibration amplitude and we can get the phase angle. So, this is all about the forced vibration characteristics. Thank you.